What's going on folks, Coley on the War here. I am at Dallas Auto Exchange in Dallas, Texas. And my last car video, a lot of people asked me, well, what are your thoughts on the C8? What are your thoughts on the C8? What are your thoughts on the C8? Well, there it is. in pictures and in videos ah, ah, mid-engine Corvette I mean I didn't really grow up as a Corvette guy I had one of the little like toys when I was younger that I used to race around the kind of Hot Wheels track I know yeah, some of y'all are too too young you know what I'm talking about but I had like a Corvette for the Hot Wheels track that I used to race around it so I always had an affinity to a degree subconsciously for Corvettes never owned one though I've driven several of them C6 not my favorite C7 thought was a mark improvement from what the C6 was. Now we're at the C8. This is a lot different. Like I said, when I saw it in videos, when I saw it in pictures, I said, eh, it's cool. But it seemed like it was kind of sort of trying to be what the Corvette was never supposed to be. The Corvette was supposed to be American, America, all that stuff. It was kind of bucking in the face design wise, everything from what, uh, prototypical supercar or super sports car was supposed to be from an American standpoint. And you know, it was front engined. It, it you know, it didn't handle the greatest. Um, interior was a little sheepy. Um, it was just kind of, you know, but it was unapologetically a Corvette. And it, they knew their market and that's who they sold their cars to. Now I look at it and I said, it's kind of sort of, a little Euro. Like, it looks kind of like every other mid-engine Euro sports car on the market. You know, like Ferrari. Like, I don't know, even to a degree McLaren. Especially with this side vent here. And keep in mind, I'm talking about this from the standpoint of seeing it in pictures and in videos. Now I'm looking at it in person. And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I don't feel the same. First of all, the Corvette is always known for being very, very angular. I'm not the biggest lover of super angular cars, um, but this works. It's very Corvette-ish, I like it. And, and I love the way that all of the sharp edges are flowing to a centralized point, which is here. My eyes just wanna look here. And I like it, it's aggressive, it's angry. It is unapologetically American still, and I like that. Even though I tend to lean towards the more Eurocentric cars and the more foreign cars, I like this. I will say this though, some of this stuff is a little, it's, it's almost a little too plasticky. Um, that's kind of the theme in a lot of newer cars these days, and I'm assuming a lot of it has to do with just keeping the car light. I just like how everything just comes, swoops down and sends to a point. The first time I saw this car, the most striking difference of this car is gonna be from the profile. It is very Euro. I, I can't help but say it, I can't, it is very Euro, but it's Euro in a, an American way. It's like they took all of the design language from the old, cor old Corvettes and then took the things that were kind of, eh, you know, could do without, and it took all of the good aspects of the Euro language design. So, you know, of course you got a little bit more angular, but then there's still very much their curves. Like you have this hip here that swoops down here to the middle. Everything, every, all the lines on this car tell, tell your eyes exactly what it wants it to do. I will say I do not like this contrast side blade as much. Like I said before, I'm, I'm a guy that likes black cars. So I kind of really want to see what this car looks like in black and it kind of a unison because I, I tend to like a uninterrupted silhouette. And you get that with this car, except for this weird kind of hockey blade that kind of sits here on the side. It's not a deal breaker for me, but it is definitely something that I personally, if I were to spec this car out, I probably wouldn't have it on here. Let's talk about the back. Let's just be honest, it looks like a Camaro. It's the back of a Camaro for the most part, especially around this kind of quarter rear panel right here. It gives me a lot of Camaro. And I kind of understand why they did that. 
it, it, it very much is in keeping with the design language of the American supercar sports car, so to speak. And I didn't like it initially, but now I kind of do um, because it doesn't completely make the car look like it's trying to copy all of the other kind of foreign Eurocentric style cars. And the reason I keep going back to this whole foreign component is because this car looks totally different from every other Corvette that I've ever seen. And, and it looks real close <laughs> to a lot of the supercars that we're seeing now. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people love about this Corvette. You're talking about a car that starts in the area of 60, high 60,000, that is a car that if you took off the badges and you know what you were looking at, this car easily, easily, you would think it was in the upper hundred thousands of dollars with respect to the price on this car. And that to me is the biggest aspect of the C8 Corvette is you get 150 to $200,000 presents for a fraction of the price. Now, I, I am not a fan of this back porch. I don't, I, I don't like the rear, I don't even know what you would call this, fin, blade, whatever the case it is. I think you could do without it. I think it, it interrupts the lines of the car a little bit because like I said before, a lot of lines just flow to a point and I like that visually. But, you know, it is what it is. Personally, I probably would take it off if I could, but it still works. Americans get a bad rap by a lot of the European car reviewers um, and talks, talk about how, oh, our obsession with cup holders, how we're fat and lazy and we and all this stuff. It's not that. It's just as an Americans, we work our asses off and we like to pay for convenience when available. Not only do you have a rear camera, which is here on the back of the car, it even has front and facing cameras. It can also double as a dash cam. How many cars you know they can do that? Come on, you can't beat that. And what I felt like Chevy did was they looked at their market and they said, how do we take all of the good, get rid of all of the bad, and make improvements without our ego invested? So they did things, and they started doing this with the C7. They did things like the magnetic riding, they, they worked on the handling, but more importantly, they fixed the interior. I went to San Francisco, and I took a C7, and I drove it around the mountains, hills, whatever the hell you wanna call it, in San Fran for several hours. And I was just not impressed with the interior. And everybody used to rant and rave about the C7 interior, like, oh my God, it's so amazing. No, it wasn't, it was terrible. It felt cheap, it looked cheap. It didn't do anything for you, it didn't evoke any emotion. And I like cabins that evoke a certain level of emotion. And that didn't, it just felt like I was in a fast ass car. I might as well have been a Dodge Viper for all I care. That was from 2004, 2003. Now, the Dodge Viper has its own lane. You don't buy the Dodge Viper for the interior. You buy the Dodge Viper because it's a Dodge Viper. This, on the other hand, this is supposed to be America's iconic super supercar sports car. I keep saying that because I don't. I, it's a sports car. It's a supercar, but it's like a super supercar sports car, so to speak. And damn, this is a good place to be. It's a really nice place to be. In my review of the Porsche 911 GT3, I called it the anti-social car because everything about it was centered around the driver. I gotta be honest with you, this isn't, if, if that is antisocial, this takes that and, and blows it to a whole nother level. Everything about this car, th this car does not give two shits about the passenger. Everything about it is centered towards the driver, but it works. Everything's in hands reach. This center dash here, the verdict is still out on the center, on this, this, this center console strip here. Um, it's a really busy, it seems overly simplistic, borderline lazy. I feel like in daily use, you're really gonna enjoy using it and having it here. It's amazing how everything is in such short reach. And I'm not that tall of a, I'm not that tall of a guy. And everything just feels very at reach. It, it's freaking awesome. I love it. The materials, the stitching, the leather feels good. In the old Corvette, the leather felt like plastic. It was leather, but it felt plasticky. Here, it actually feels plush like the seats are comfortable they hug you without overly squeezing you the steering wheel which is a square steering wheel or octagonish whatever the hell you want to call it feels good in hand with this alcantara suede it's a little busy with all the buttons and things of that nature but again everything is at arm's length there's no reaching for it i don't have to do any of that stuff it just works and i'm and i'm really kind of speechless because i remember the c7 just being not a great place to be it felt a little walmart -y. 
this feels a little Neiman Marcus-y with a little bit of walmart -y. Only from the standpoint that it's American, but that's a good thing. I think American cars should be American. Even though I lean towards the more Euro side of cars, I, I like when American cars are unapologetically American. And what they did here is they looked at their market and they said, all right, how do we take something that's affordable, make it give you a big bang for your buck, and then provide all the modern conveniences that I honestly think a car should have. I can talk all day about how your cars are so sexy and they're sensual and they give you so much emotion, and I love that stuff. But let's be real, a lot of those cars lack a lot of the modern creature comforts that they should be having a car. A Ford Focus should not have more technology than a damn, than a damn Porsche or Maserati or any of that. It just doesn't make any sense. Here what they did was they said, let's screw all that nonsense. That, that's lazy engineering if you ask me. What they did is like, we're gonna give you all the tech, we're gonna give you all the convenience, and we're gonna give you all the presents you want out of a sports car that you pay 60 to 70 grand for. And that's dope. I, 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 you can't hate on that. And anybody that hates on that is a hater. <laughs> I'm just a hater. Like just the technology in this car is insane. Let's see. I did get stuck in the car because I didn't know how to open the door. I couldn't figure it out, but if you look here, there's a button here, you hear you unlock the door here, and you push this to unlock the door. It's actually really intuitive, but if you don't know it going into it, you're gonna get stuck in a car. So don't be me, don't embarrass yourself and get stuck in a car. Um, I love the contrast of this, of this Bose speaker. This, this aluminum shiny finish with this black interior, it screams me all day long. Now, I'm obsessed with black, so that shouldn't surprise anyone. I'm kind of a purist from the standpoint that I tend to like metallic gauges and you know um, mechanical gauges versus the digital. With all the things that these cars do and all the things that they can do and all the information they need to feed back to you, uh, digital is kind of the way to go. But then even here, the way it's rendered, I mean, the fonts are very clear. It doesn't look cheap. I have, and I'm obsessed with information and I have pretty much everything that I need in front of me. My gas, my temperatures on my, on my um, my fluids i have my tachometer in front of me i have all of it and then i'm pretty sure if, once i deep sea dive into everything that goes on within the center dash in here i mean it turns into a whole nother monster the z button the z button essentially is taking the most ferocious settings putting them in one button and pushing this button and it does everything for you in that regard it is a good looking color i would never get it in this color because i'm not a big fan of orange and if you don't know how i feel about the color orange just watch my video about the porsche 911 gt3 which is in orange but this orange is is a little different and let's take for instance look at this color orange then look at this 911 gt s orange and then look at this horicon orange this sits that's a beautiful color orange. I'll be honest with you, that's a very beautiful color orange. I'm not the biggest fan of that color orange because it kind of does this weird pastel, almost pinkish kind of look. I think this strikes a perfect balance of having a lot of depth to the color and it doesn't scream the same way that Lamborghini does, but at the same time, it gives, like I said, it allows the car to have enough presence and it's, it's borderline striking, especially with the, with the overall shape of the car, it really works with the car. From this angle here with the door open, and you look into this car, this is this should not be a sixty to seventy thousand dollar car. It just shouldn't. It just shouldn't. Now just look at that. But it is, and you got to give them props for that. It's it's literally hey, how let's give the people, let's give our customers the biggest bang for their buck. Now granted, after you option it out, do all the appointments. You're kind of close, you're gonna be sitting closer to 80, 80 grand. But you know what you get for 80 grand in other cars? Not this. You don't get two trunks. You have a trunk here, which actually kind of gives you a lot of room. I mean, we're talking about a mid engine car. I mean, look at that. And then look, look, look at how beautiful that engine looks. That's gorgeous. There we go. Now, here's another thing. This just jaggedy edge right here, closed, closed, I, it works. Takes, your, takes everything visually, brings it down to the center. I like that visually. However, opened, not the biggest fan. It kind of reminds me of a pumpkin, but that's neither here nor there. But look, 
even more storage space. How many cars do you know within this class or above its class gives you storage space where you have a trunk in the front and a trunk in the back and with a lot of depth? Aren't that many. They took everything that was generally good about Eurocentric cars and they took everything that was already good about American cars and everything that was good about Corvettes and they brought them all together. I gotta be honest with you, without driving it, and this is a consignment, so I can't drive it just yet, but I do plan to get one where I can drive it and give you my driving opinions about the car. Right now, from where I stand, based on quality, based on features, based on practicality, based on presence, as far as visually, I can't, there's not, it's, it's, it's damn near, kind of perfect. The only imperfect aspect of it is how do you feel about the actual styling? Like you, when you button it up and close, I mean, even this. <laughs> Easy close rear end, like it's almost borderline too good. And, and that's very cliche to say, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way because there was already so much, so many wrongs <laughs> with the Corvette cars that you could berate for the longest time. And I think what they've done is they said, what are all the negatives about the Corvette and how do we get rid of them? And they did that. They didn't get rid of them, they demolished them. And I think it makes all the sense in the world. You take this car, you pull up to the light next to a guy in a 458, a Huracan, you almost kind of look at the other cars and think to yourself, you paid how much for that? So unless you're just an enthusiast and you love those cars, you'd be an idiot. You'd be an idiot. And I mean a stone cold idiot. Not to at least consider the C8. And that's coming from a guy who couldn't stand the C6 and thought the C7 interior was trash. <sighs> they killed it. So before I go, I just want to thank the guys at Dallas Auto Exchange for giving me the opportunity to film this surprisingly awesome car um for you, anyone that's interested these cars are kind of hard to get their hands on because chevy stopped making them due to the beer flu or at least they're on hold and sars production is concerned but right now this car is available on consignment here at dallas auto exchange so jump on their website i'll put a link in the description um check it out for yourself so oh shameless plug you know i gotta plug the t-shirts it's just kind of the way it is baby you know guns cars and they're kind of one and the same, depending on who you ask.